Welcome back. So now that we have some kind of product interface, we kind of need to consider where do we want to put our data? So do we want to store the data in local storage? Do we want to kind of not store it? Do we want just to refresh to remove all the data? In my case, I want to kind of store it in a database somewhere, inside a backend somewhere. But I don't want to start building the entire .NET Core backend again like I've done in previous videos. You can go and check those tutorials if you want to. Instead, I'm going to use Firebase. Now, I've always made, also made videos about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly get up and running with a Firebase solution right here to show you guys some of the problems you might face with observables, with promises, some of the more complex async calls with a data system, uh, some kind of backend system, right? So that's kind of where I want to go. So I'm not going to spend too much time in Firebase, but I want to kind of give you guys the brief explanation about why I think Firebase is a pretty promising system for a, a real in-cloud solution. So let's try and jump into Firebase and have a look at what we can actually get from it. Now I've logged in uh, with a user right here on a Google, a Google account and then I'm going into Firebase Google.com. Pretty simple stuff. I have a console now because I actually want to be a part of Firebase. So I've accepted a few terms. When I go to the console, I can go in and create a new project. And that's what I'm going to do right here. I'll create a new project because I want to start storing my data from my Angular app inside the backend which is going to be Firebase. So let's give it a name right here. I'm just going to call this uh, Awesome Products App, something like that. I don't know, you can find a better name I know but I just, I just want some kind of name right here. I'm going to accept analytics and I'm going to accept the terms. Try and go and read the terms if you want to. I'm a-okay with it. I'll let this run to create the project. Now while this is creating the project let's try and talk about how do we actually combine and work together with Angular and Firebase. Is there like a way to kind of make those two talk together? And the answer is yes, there is. There's something called Angular Fire which we'll dive into in the next lesson to kind of bind these two together, right? So it, it's going to be very simple for us to start working with Firebase. Sweet. Let's see, the project is now created. I'll continue and go into this project right here and you'll see this is actually the Firebase project that you get out of the box. And let's just try to talk about what you actually get out of the box with a project. Uh, you get authentication, you can set that up, pretty simple. Uh, I hope we can get into that later on and I'll try and make a few videos about how you can use it. You get the database, you actually get two choices of database. You can either choose the real-time database or you can choose the Firestore, which is just released from beta. So this is actually a real running database now, where before it was a beta version, this just happened like two days ago. I was just told from some from my class who said, do you know it's out of beta? And I was like, woo, yay! So this is actually a real database now that you can start using. If you're used to SQL databases, relational databases, this is different because this is a document-based database and we'll talk more about that as well. But that's the one we're going to use. Now we have storage as well, which is a place where you can start storing files. Oh yes, we'll get into that as well. We need to be able to store files, retrieve files, and since Firebase already have it, that's what I'm going to use. We're going to use hosting so we can share our app with the world. Pretty much just an easy way to host an Angular app. We're going to use functions, which is a way for us to kind of uh, trigger events for instance, if I save something to my database, I want to do something with that data before I save it, I can actually do it on the server, on the backend. So I, this is an access point for me to kind of add some business logic before I save, retrieve data, or what, whatever I want to do. It has limitations, but also has some great possibilities. The final one is a new one. I have not looked into this yet, but I am definitely going to check this out. It's a way to kind of start using machine learning inside your project right here. Machine learning. That's a buzzword and that's something that's going to skyrocket right now. Everybody wants you to learn machine learning. So that's a very cool place if you can get started right here and maybe figure this out. So that's kind of why I want to use Firebase because I don't have to sit down now and build everything from scratch. Now I had a few questions. Why, not, why do you even want to build a .NET Core application if you have stuff like Firebase? Well, there could be some different reasons why you want a .NET Core backend instead of a Firebase backend. For instance, do you know where you're storing your data right here? Is it stored in, in, in I'm in Denmark right now, is it stored there? Is it stored in the US? What about data? Uh, is it okay to store it in the US for the company I'm working for? Maybe not, then you want it in-house. Can we, if we want it in-house, can we set up our own Firebase solution in-house? The answer is yes, but there's a lot of things you have to consider before you decide if you want to use Firebase or your own backend. What about, what about capabilities? Can I do anything I want in Firebase or are there some limitations that I need uh, so I cannot use the .NET Core backend? Uh, or, or how is it all set up, right? You need to consider these things before you decide if you want to use Firebase or you want to build your own solution. But one thing you need to know upfront is that you can actually combine them. And I'll try to combine them so we have some .NET 
core backend somewhere that can do some stuff for us with an SQL database. And then we're going to have some Firebase information that can do some other things for us. Now the power there is this, now we can combine the power of these two worlds where we have a strong SQL database, which is something everybody has used forever. And then we have the document beta database, which is kind of new still. And then we can use some of the powers of that combined with some of the powers of transactions and store procedures and crazy stuff like that. So we're going to dive into this, but let's just start with Firebase. Let's end it here. I know that was a long guide. Next step, let's try and figure out how we can get the Firebase part into our Angular app. See you next time. Have fun.